Hello, I'm Val Zavala. KCT is proud to take a few minutes to spotlight the work of organizations that are making a difference in the world. My name is Morris Dees. I'm the uh, founder and uh, chief trial counsel of the Southern Poverty Law Center. The Poverty Law Center's mission is, first of all, I guess you say, seeking justice and then fighting hate, and finally, teaching acceptance and tolerance. Ain't gonna let nobody turn me around. We found that we were enforcing the civil rights laws that were passed, primarily affecting the South, voter rights, voter education, serving, integrating schools and juries and things of that nature. But things have changed. The Southern Poverty Law Center has been in existence for about four decades. It soon became the predominant player in monitoring and fighting hate groups in the United States. We've seen an enormous growth in this country of, of intolerance, uh, and especially since Obama got elected. We've seen the militia hate groups increase from about 350 hate groups in the country, militia groups, I should say, to now over 1,200. California, for example, has got about 40 or so of these militia patriot groups. The ones in this state, though, are typically the neo-Nazi skinhead groups, and about 40 of the hate groups in this state are either anti-gay, anti-immigrant, or anti-government. The Southern Poverty Law Center innovated brilliant legal strategies to use the civil law in a way that it hadn't been used before against hate groups. We will not take prisoners. We will not compromise. There will be no treaties until you are wiped out of our country. It used the traditional civil case to hold hate groups and their leaders responsible for the violent and often murderous crimes of their rank and file to put them out of business. I think I've been successful in creating a total totally new wave of uh, white racists among the youth. Tom Metzger, a uh, former Klan leader who became a neo-Nazi leader, had an organization called the White Aryan Resistance and had a youth group, an Aryan youth group. And he was pretty widespread around America. Uh, in chapters here, there, and yonder. He actually encouraged overt violence, go out and do violence. He published material that showed blacks and Latinos being stabbed and killed by whites. And some of his organizers went to Portland, Oregon, and uh, they beat an Ethiopian man over the head and bat and killed him. The jury decided that Metzger sent him there, aided and abetted what he did, encouraged him, and conspired with him to commit racial violence not necessarily against this one man, this Ethiopian, but people in general, and the jury returned a $12.5 million verdict. It bankrupted Metzger's group. And it was that connection of getting the heads of the group and the group itself held liable financially that took some of the most notorious, long-standing hate groups out of the picture. United Clans of America, Invisible Knights of the Ku Klux Klan, White Air and Resistance. These were groups that were really trying to foment violence without being held criminally responsible. The biggest, I guess, the most dangerous hate group in America today is the internet. It's a virtual hate group. There must be six or eight hundred hate websites on the internet, and a young person who couldn't find a skinhead group or a clan group to join, all they gotta do in the anonymity of bedroom is click a few keys, and they're, they're getting some of the most virulent, hateful material out there. Hate music uh, is probably the, the biggest uh, thing that draws young people into hate groups. And then you end up getting a guy who killed the six Sikhs. We had been tracking him for a long time. He had a hate band that he operated and, uh, you know, and worked with groups that had some pretty nasty, hateful songs. In our society, we become the outsiders. And this man, you know, it felt so put upon, I guess, by the emotional pressure he felt from the changing America that he had to go out and wake up the white people to do something. You have the right to hate in America, but you don't have the right to cross that line and hurt people. And the way to fight that is with tolerance education programs, acceptance programs that put a lie to some of the distortions they're saying. And also, if something has to start at the top, 
from the President of the United States down to the state officials, corporate officials, church leaders, so that we have an all-inclusive community, not isolating these people who are haters so that they want to fight back, but to try to reach out to them in as many ways as we can to get them to understand that being inclusive and being fair to all people is, is the right way to be. SoCal Cares is brought to you through the generosity of Albert Sweet and Occidental Entertainment Group Holdings.